something is missing. Something is missing, I'll be right back. Here it is. I found it in the garage while we were cleaning, set it aside and said, I need that for Thanksgiving. There's a reason I found it. Now it feels like Thanksgiving, kind of. Actually, the weather today is perfect for cooking all day. We have the doors open. What is it? It's 70 degrees. 70 degrees. Perfect weather. Welcome to Florida. I got ink all over myself trying to print out all of the recipes I plan on sharing with you guys. There's so many, I don't even know if I should list them off because there are so many. These we're making today. These I'm gonna whip up in the morning along with the turkey and ham. Should be pretty simple. They'll all be included today. Um, the recipes I decided to share with you are other than classics. So I feel like everyone's always sharing the classics. You know your tried and true recipes. What I planned on finding and what I succeeded at, I feel like, are unique, different recipes that are hopefully delicious that you'll want to make tomorrow. My battery's dying already. So many interruptions already. I think we're gonna start off with some Parmesan butternut squash gratin. Where do we start? I guess we can preheat the oven that will inevitably be on all day long. 375, feeling alive. It feels weird to set my oven to something other than 411 degrees because that's what I've cooked everything at for the past three years. So maybe these dishes will be extra delicious because of that. Butternut squash, Parmesan, panko breadcrumbs, garlic, and butter. Seems pretty simple. I have a lot of dishes. This one is new. I think it's like fancy. We're hosting Thanksgiving. Did I share that? Sometimes Alex and I are running around to like seven different Thanksgivings. Not really seven, but you understand. And so I have to make like multiple of the same side dish. So anyway, this year we're hosting. It's gonna be chaos, but it'll be great. All right, where do we begin the butternut squash? Peel, have lengthwise, and seed. I have to peel this? Okay, peel it. Can I use a peeler on a butternut squash? Holy cow, look at that. I forgot to mention a lot of these recipes are super simple to throw together. Hopefully they're delicious because the last thing we wanna do on a holiday like Thanksgiving is slave away in the kitchen. I'm making all of these the day before. So that way when time comes to spend time with the family and enjoy your life, uh, you're doing just that. Wow, this is a peeler someone sent me and it is cutting through this stuff like butter. Like butternut squash. I don't think butternut squash gets enough love. Wait, I'm doing two of these? I'm exhausted already. That's a workout. This is the worst cutting job I've ever done. Julia Child is rolling. Okay, look how beautiful that is. Uh, let's do it again. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Now that my butternut squash are seeded, I'm going to cut them into half inch thick slices. I mean, on here, they're all the same size. On the picture, they look great. Whatever, we're just gonna do our best. Half inch thick, this is, I don't know, closer to an inch, I'd say. Leave your rulers in the drawer. This is not the time or the place. It's Thanksgiving, it's not Top Chef. It's gonna be fine. Your family's gonna be so impressed with whatever it is that you make. And if they're not, good riddance to them. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking getting two butternut squash. I definitely don't need two. But here we are. Okay, now I'm just going to arrange it in the dish so it looks nice. I just don't even know how they began to set it up like that. Part of me just wants to cut it into cubes. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna cut mine into cubes. Because how is this gonna cook the same time as this? Ugh. Fine. That's what good cooks do, right? They improvise. These knife cuts are perfection. Finally done. I'm just gonna add it all in here, cubed up. I think it's easier to eat that way. No one needs a knife. That's a lot of squash. Next, I need two cloves of garlic. And to easily get the garlic out of a bulb like this, you just cut off the ends, like cut off the root and then all the rest will just kind of fall apart. It's fantastic. And today I also want to throw some 
garlic into the oven because if, have you ever had roasted garlic? It's so simple. So maybe I'll, I'll share that with you as soon as we're done with this one. The recipe calls for two cloves of garlic. I like to go above and beyond and I'm just gonna dice it up. Mince it, if you will. Now with any great fancy recipe, we're gonna bring it on to the stove top. You're gonna melt a quarter cup of butter in a saucepan, four tablespoons, half a stick, however you wanna measure. Ooh. See my old stove top, you could touch it and it wouldn't burn you, but this one, guarantee you, I will burn myself today. Just let that garlic cook out, a couple minutes. So while that's happening, we're gonna throw together, I don't know, the topping maybe? You need a quarter cup of panko breadcrumbs. I'm gonna do a little bit more, and I'm probably gonna add a little bit more butter because I have a lot of squash in there, right? Yeah, I'm gonna do a full stick. It's Thanksgiving. All right, I added it, no regrets. More is more on Thanksgiving, so let's do half a cup. And you can use the powder Parmesan or literally whatever Parmesan you have or whatever cheese that you like. It calls for a third cup. I'm gonna add way more than that because like I said, first of all, add cheese to anything and kids are more likely to eat it, except for my kids who are allergic to dairy. I feel like this needs some Italian seasoning. How about you? I just opened this jar and already I feel like I'm closer to Thanksgiving. Just add a little bit of any seasonings that you like. I happen to enjoy some Italian seasoning. I'm also partial to some salt and pepper. Maybe a little bit more because why not? Oh yes, I feels like I'm at my Aunt Judy's already. Italian seasoning really kicks it up. What, what brand is this? It's fantastic. Simply Truth, that's nice. Here's what we do next. Add a couple tablespoons of this butter mixture in here. Mix that up. Not sure why we do that. Are we trying to make like a nice crumb topping? I'm gonna need a little more butter than that, the amount of breadcrumbs I used. And we take our squash, brush the rest of the mixture on here, except for I diced mine up, so I'm just gonna give it a nice little toss here. Maybe put some more in there, no big deal. The garlic and butter, oh my gosh, the garlic. I say it every time, fresh herbs. They elevate a dish to no other level. Speaking of fresh herbs, you're supposed to have parsley for this. Uh, my local store was out of it when I went shopping yesterday. However, I planned on going this morning and picking up some parsley, but you know how the day gets away from us. All right, I'm gonna take the breadcrumb mixture and just flop it over top. Oh yes, now it is feeling like the holidays. This is where it's at. Don't skimp on that top coat. That is fantastic. Let's get this in the oven. About 30 minutes since I cut mine up. Maybe you'll need to go longer if you made big pieces. 30 minutes. I also told you I would share with you how to make oven roasted garlic. Oh my gosh. I think you, do you cut the root off or the top? I think we cut the top off, okay. I'm going from memory here. Okay, so then you take this, your bulb of garlic, pop it onto some tin foil, Grab some olive oil and douse it. Oh my gosh, I, I'm already drooling. The, when this comes out of the oven, pop it in the oven for, I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour until it's done. And I promise you, it comes out, you can, it's like butter, you can spread it on bread. You won't regret doing this. Your guests won't regret it either. Just right in there. Well, I can't contain myself. Next up is Ina Garden's brownie pudding. First of all, brownies. Second of all, Ina Garden. Third of all, pudding. Can't have Thanksgiving without some pudding. Oh my gosh, I left the stove on. My old stove, you took something off the burner and it would shut off automatically. I, it's gonna be an adjustment, okay? Let's hope I don't burn the house down. You know how fancy Ina Garden is. This recipe calls for some vanilla beans, which I normally never have on hand. Someone sent them to me. Oh, gour they even say gourmet vanilla beans. They're from Indonesia. What? So typically, I would just use vanilla extract and call that a day. But since it's Thanksgiving, we're going all out. Oh wow, this smells amazing. For some reason, I thought it would be softer. Making my nose black. I grabbed this bowl from Home Goods. 
it's going to be the first thing I make in, in it. It says, Baking Spirits Bright. Isn't that incredible? Oh, never mind. I need a KitchenAid for this because you have to beat the eggs for five to ten minutes. Okay. Now that we have everything set up. See, that's what happens when you don't read the instructions. I never read the instructions, but we always make it work. Four extra large eggs. These, look how beautiful these eggs are. Aren't they incredible? Our neighbor sells eggs. All right, I have them washed. I'm gonna crack in four eggs. Amazing. Two at a time. Yes. Well, I just looked all around the house for sugar. We don't have any, this is the, oh, this is not two cups. Wait, is this even sugar? Oh, Lord help me. Well, I might have to run to the store after all. It's not enough. Ah. What's the last thing you want to do the day before Thanksgiving? Run to the grocery store. But I have to make Ina Garden's brownie pudding. I have to. I'll be right back. Finally home from the store, three hours later, but I have sugar. I actually bought two, and I'm still gonna run out next time I need sugar, I bet. While I was at the store, I found a holiday cookie platter and I figured I wanna put together a hot cocoa charcuterie board, if you will, really like desserts or whatever you want. And I saw these and I thought, perfect for my semi-homemade Thanksgiving. That's what this is all about, trying to put things together as easily as we can without killing ourselves, essentially. So where were we? At least now our eggs are at room temperature, which is ideal. And our squash, I just took it out of the oven. Oh, it looks fantastic. It smells even better. I opened the door and I said, that's it. I won't have to be burning my DW Thanksgiving candle because it's gonna smell so good. With all this food, well, I can guess where Alex tried to see if it was done. <laughs> it smells even better. Can you smell it? <gasps> Wait, you know what else I got while I was at Publix? Ooh, I had some parsley. So I'm gonna chop this up and then tomorrow I'm gonna heat it up and then I'm gonna add some parsley on top of it. Perfect. Oh, it's Thanksgiving, guys. Okay, so where were we? Two cups of sugar making the brownie pudding. Can't go wrong with the brownie pudding. What is this, two cups of sugar? Two cups, one and a two in here. Now there's sugar all over the floor. It's cool. Is it even Thanksgiving if you're not making a mess? Whip that up for five to 10 minutes. It looks so heavenly and delicious. I don't know about you, but I could eat that right now. Salmonella, I dare you. Hello. <laughs> Who's there? Well, that's going, sorry, we have some guests that just arrived. Half a cup of flour, three quarters cup of cocoa powder, and you guys, if I don't have three quarters cup, we're just gonna do without because, <gasps> there's no way I'm going back up to the store. That's good enough, but we'll call it even, okay? And then the seeds from a vanilla bean. Does it get much fancier than this? Let's crack this guy open, huh? They make it look so easy on the Food Network. I think I got it. Crack it. They make it look so easy. Like, oh, scrape out the vanilla seeds. Huh? It's not working for me. Ooh, there they are, just falling out. Mommy. Do I have to boil this or something? I have a feeling I did something wrong with this, so I'm just gonna try to scrape the powder that's inside of this in here. What have I done? I feel like I'm supposed to like Boil this in something. Where's Julia Child when you need her? Here it is. I just put it right in there. It smells really great. Kind of smells like woodsy. I feel like maybe I should rehydrate one. What's done is done. Give this a whisk, and then we're gonna combine it with the fluff. Ooh! I love when I make mistakes like that. You guys, it's been like four hours since I started. We've had guests over. All the kids are interrupting every four seconds. So once your mixture is nice and creamy and dreamy, you add two sticks of melted butter. Melted yet cooled butter. How do we get that effect? That's up to you. What I did was melted it like halfway so there was still some chunks, but then I mixed it together and it still stays kind of cool. And then you add the flour and cocoa mixture just until combined. Oh, and that looks 
so I could eat that with a spoon. It smells delicious. Let's move all this stuff to the side. I take the skin of the butter and I try to coat the bottom of the pan. That's how I grease it because there's got to be some residual stuff on there happening. Oh, wow, this is dreamy. Salmonella, I dare you, it is worth it. The smell alone, I could bathe in this. It tastes fancy. It tastes gourmet, which is probably good for Thanksgiving. It's not Ghirardelli, but I'd eat it. All right. I'm just gonna scrape the sides of the bowl and make sure everything's incorporated. Yeah, the bottom there, did you see that? All those white ribbons in here. Get everything combined and then plop it in some kind of baking dish oh wow and this is when mom gets to lick the spoon and it makes thanksgiving prep all worth it delicious <laughs> moving on honestly the more i lick it the more i love it where's that recipe oh well i have to clean off the sides of the pan here oh my did i do <laughs> Oh, wait a second. You have to do a water bath. That's how fancy this dish is. I'm not prepared for this. Oh boy. I might run out of pans. You need another pan to put this pan into. And then you get some tap water, the hottest it can be. That's pretty hot. And then you fill it up halfway up the white pan. I've never done this. I've seen people do it a lot and I thought, <laughs> that's too fancy for me, okay. Well, that's good enough, into the oven. Oh, gosh, I'm gonna spill water everywhere. For one hour, oh. Ah, I just spill it everywhere. I'm ruined. It's not Thanksgiving unless you're making a mess. That's what I only say. Oh crap, I didn't even smooth it out. Where's my spatula? Oh, I licked it. It's okay, made with love. Now I get to lick it again. <laughs> All right, well, is dinner ready yet? <laughs> What's next? Let, let's move on to something delicious. Okay, we'll do baked crab ragoon. <laughs> nope. Baked crab popper delights. Let me, let me just tidy up a smidge. Not too much, just a little. That butternut squash, I promise you, that, that alone smells like Thanksgiving. What do we need for crab popper? Whatever we're making. Some crab, some corn, lemon, green onions, bell pepper, mayonnaise, cayenne pepper, salt and pepper. I think that's it. Oh, panko breadcrumbs. All right, let's mix all this junk together. Let me get a bowl. Also need an egg, fresh from the farm. I'm not big on seafood, but I know during the holidays, it's like a big thing that people buy. All the shrimp is on sale, which is still really expensive. This is so expensive. It's like $6 for a can like this. Might as well get caviar. We're going this deep. Oh my gosh, this is how fancy it is. It comes wrapped in paper. Oh wow, look at that. I'm gonna drain these. It actually calls for three cans of these. Well, more than three cans, but I'm a cheapo and I got two cans and they better be happy about that. Oh, now I smell like fish. I'm sorry, what? All right, let's cut some stuff up. Did we set an alarm for that pudding? Okay, good. I'm gonna cut up some green onions for the crab meat bowls. And to be honest, I'm not sure if this is the same recipe that I found when I made my ingredient list because I thought there were jalapenos involved. Of course I could always add some, but for now some of this is garnish and maybe some of it's going in. Who the heck knows, man? Clearly not me. Next, I'm going to cut up a bell pepper. Not the whole thing, maybe just two halves. It calls for three mini bell peppers. So if that gives you any indication on how much to cut. I'm just gonna try to dice these into really small pieces. So I feel like the crab meat is really small pieces. I don't want people to think I made bell pepper balls. Well, you know what? I left out a can of crab meat, so we have to bulk them up another way. No one ever complained about eating too many veggies, right? Looks good to me. We're also going to need a lemon. Ooh, this one's nice and squishy. 
maybe on its last day. Oh, I almost forgot. We need one cup of corn. So I just have it in a can. I'm sure you can use frozen. I'm gonna drain this. Okay, so we're gonna add one cup of corn in here, then a quarter cup of green onions, three small red bell peppers, the juice of one lemon. I'm collecting the seeds in my hands, but it never works out. Look, they jumped right out of my dang hands. Where did you go? Wow. Where did you go? Oh man, it looks like a piece of corn. Never gonna find it. Well, someone's gonna eat a lemon seed. Ooh, I found it. Oh, <gasps> did I just drop it again trying to show you? Dang, that's messed up. It's the miracle of Thanksgiving that I found that. I'm going to add one egg, three quarters cup of mayonnaise, it's a couple big tablespoons here, and then some salt and pepper. I feel like this could benefit from some garlic, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. Not a lot, just enough to make people say, ooh, this is seasoned to perfection. Don't over mix it, I guess crab meat is really delicate. Ooh, it smells really bright. Okay, this pan is gonna get a lot of love today. Oh, crap. Well, that's what happens when you don't read the instructions. Only half the mayonnaise goes in. Ooh, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, because it must. All right, I'm gonna spray these with some nonstick spray and then toss some breadcrumbs in each one. Give a little shake so it coats the bottom of the pan. And uh, since I messed up, oh gosh, I don't know what to do. Get some cheesecloth up in here. I don't know, you know what, we improvise here. So I'm just gonna add in some panko. I uh, probably messed it up. Half of the mayonnaise was for like a dipping sauce, so yeah, there's that. Well, it's colorful nonetheless. I think it'll be fine. It has to be, it'll be fine. I tried, man. I tried to read ahead. I tried to do my best. And that's all we can do really is our best. Let me get a scoop. A scoop, there it is. A scoop, there it is. A scoop, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if I did it for every single one? I mean, I'd laugh. Well, on the plus side, you won't need any dipping sauce because I added it in. Well, the good news is we have a little bit left over. I'm gonna pop these into the oven, 425 degrees for 10 minutes. That's all it takes. Okay, we are moving on to one of my all-time favorite recipes of all time. We don't need mayonnaise. It is holiday cranberry jalapeno dip. When I tell you it's supreme, you better listen, because it is. If you like jalapenos and cranberry, well, I don't even like cranberries. You're gonna love this. Cream cheese, I'm doubling the recipe. That's how much I love it. Last time I brought it somewhere and I feel like with two scoops, half of it was gone and I thought, there's none left for me. So if all else fails, I'll put one out for everyone else and save one for me the day after Thanksgiving, okay? So you need two whipped cream cheeses. I don't have them whipped because apparently, just like toilet paper, cream cheese is limited and I can only buy two. So, and I feel like I need cream cheese for something else, but who, there wasn't any left. Cream cheese, lemon, jalapenos, cilantro, green onion, cranberries, and sugar, of course. Use a hand food chopper to chop these cranberries. They say it's best not to use a pure, what is this thing called? I don't even know where it is. Nah, the phone. A hand, a pulse, a pulser. A food processor is what you need. Well, apparently you don't need one because cranberries liquefy too much. Too bad Sally Ryder is what I always say. 24 ounces because I'm doubling it. Oh, have you ever made stove top pot puri? Pot, it's called pot puri because you make it in a pot. I have not, okay, 32 ounces in here so I need about that much. Is that too much? Should I do it in two batches? I'm past the max fill line. Okay, we'll do it in two batches. Pulse it up. Don't liquefy it, just pulse it. Doesn't that just look like the holidays, right? All right, we're gonna toss the cranberries together, but I have to do more cranberries. All right, here's my second batch. 
Oh, I can't wait to eat this, man. I'm telling you, it's so good. So I don't really follow the directions. I know, you're so surprised. But it actually says to like combine the ingredients and then wait overnight and then finish it in the morning. Yeah, I don't have time for all that. So here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I should have put it in a white bowl. It would pop so much more. So many of my bowls broke, okay. You know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it for you. Here we go, here we go, one more time. Everybody's feeling fine, here we go. Yes, 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 here we go. Cranberry's got the flow. Doesn't that look better? It's like nothing ever happened. Except for now I have one more dish to wash. What is wrong with me? It's all about presentation on Thanksgiving. Am I right? How much of this crap? A quarter cup of green onions. And that means I need a half a cup. So that's a lot of green onion. And it's the best I ever had. This is the best appetizer I've ever had. Man, is that the truth or what? Why am I getting out of breath cutting this onion? Is that more like a cup? Well, give it to me, okay? Give it to me, give it to me. She's all that will forever replay in my mind over and over again. I watched it too many times growing up. Two tablespoons of cilantro? Yeah, two tablespoons mine. I'm gonna do about this much. <laughs> Chop it up, I keep the stems on. You guys, there is so much flavor in those stems. Don't you waste them. Give it a really nice chop. Oh my goodness, just the smell of this cilantro is making me drool, man. I know cilantro is polarizing. If you don't like it, leave it out. I'm not gonna make you eat something you don't like, but also, I'm just saying, it's really good. I'm gonna dump all of this in. <laughs> Never too much cilantro, I know it, I can hear you. One tablespoon of lemon juice coming right up. My lemons are so seedy lately. There's more seeds that come out of this thing than lemon juice. I've said it once, I'll say it a million times. Fresh herbs, fresh citrus, it elevates a dish. Oh man, another seed! The bane of my existence is lemon seeds. Got it. All right, and then we have some jalapenos. One to two fresh jalapenos. So here's my dilemma. Um, I've got three or four. I think I'm gonna seed three of them. Does that sound good? Okay, I should get gloves. I should definitely get gloves. Okay, I'll be right back. I chopped up the jalapenos. I ended up seeding most of them, well, all of them, but I left like some random seeds in there. They weren't perfectly clean, just to give it a little bit of heat because after all, it is a jalapeno dip. I'm gonna mix this and, ooh, I actually have to add some stuff, hold up. Some salt and about a cup of sugar per batch. So I'm gonna add like maybe a cup and a half here. Ooh, it looks like snow. It Christmas, Christmas time is he. Man, don't be late eating this appetizer dip. It's gonna be all gone if you're late. Seriously, this is magic. I'm hyping it up too much. Now you're gonna make it and be like, man, it's okay. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. It's so festive. Creamy and dreamy. Oh my gosh, drool. I'm drooling. I could eat this all with a spoon right now, but I won't. Actually, I'm gonna grab a wheat thin. I wonder if my memory is like hyping it up for me. So I'm just gonna take a little nibble, a little chef's taste test, if you will. I always have to do some quality control, make sure everything's good. Mmm, it's beyond good. I can have 15 more bites of that, but I will refrain and we're not even finished with it. Let me get a dish. Where is my cream cheese? It says to whip this up in, uh, I just whip it up. I feel like that's just one more step for me that I just don't feel like doing. So I'm gonna spread it under here and I feel like it'll be fine. It calls for whipped cream cheese and I'm sure it tastes better with whipped cream cheese, but I just don't have that. So I'm going for normal cream cheese. Honestly, I just don't feel like washing out my KitchenAid right now. Here, how about we do some of this? Give it a little whisk with a whisk. All right, well, don't waste your time doing that. Is that everything we need? I don't wanna mess this up. Directions say to do some other stuff, but I don't care. You just plop it right on top and then spread it out and I, it is a crab pleaser. What it says to do is leave this mixture in the fridge overnight and then in the morning strain out the liquid 
but I feel like there's just so much flavor in the liquid. Just leave it. It'll be fine. This is it. All right, gotta take a picture for the gram. I'll show you what I'm looking at too. Boy, does it look fancy. Fancy schmance. I'm telling you right now, man, it's my favorite. All right, what's next? Can we do anything to top this? I don't think so, but we can try. Hi, I really think things are rolling along now. I just tried this uh, crab appetizer. Not for me. I realized I am just not a seafood person. I am much more a uh, chocolate kind of person, okay? I'd much rather have chocolate than whatever the heck that, it tastes good. It's just a lot of seafood. Okay, so I'm gonna make the roasted carrots with candied pecan and goat cheese, another fancy dish. Oh, my tummy is rumbling. What do we need? Carrots, I presume? Well, I just looked for about 10 minutes for maple syrup in my grossly unorganized pantry. Couldn't find it, so I'm gonna use some honey. That's, you just keep rolling, okay? You keep moving on. Grab a pan. Get some tin foil, or I just have this like really crusty, dirty Silpat. It's not even a brand name. Windco, I got it off Amazon, it's fantastic. It's lasted me years and years and still in great shape. Recipe calls for two pounds of carrots. I'm doing four pounds and I might get, yeah, I'm gonna get more than that. I'm doing eight. Go big or go home. We got a lot of people to feed tomorrow, okay? So eight pounds, I have baby carrots. I bought them this way because I knew I didn't want to sit there with carrots peeling and chopping and dicing, julienne, all that good stuff. Robot. Ooh, half a cup of brown sugar. So we get to double that. One whole cup of brown sugar. I don't even measure. I'm just gonna sprinkle it right on top. Couple handfuls of this. It's Thanksgiving. Enjoy your meal. Sugar makes everything taste better. Seems good enough to me. Rinse my hand off. What a handy sink this is. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm just gonna sprinkle over top here. And then I assume maple syrup goes right over. Maybe that's a little bit too much cinnamon. Impossible, impossible for a plain yellow pumpkin to become a golden carriage. Impossible for a plain country bumpkin and a prince to join in marriage. And for white mice will never be for white horses. Such folder of infinity me of courses. Impossible. Man, I gotta watch Cinderella. You know what other movie I need to watch? Uh, Christmas Vacation and Napoleon Dynamite. I've been waiting to watch that. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Pepper and cinnamon, it's gonna be great. You know what makes a dish really good? It's perfectly seasoned. Oh crap, I'm not even reading the instructions. Oh, candied pecans, that's what you, oh crap, what? Oh shoot, <laughs> you need more brown sugar? Okay, now I'm all kinds of confused. Whatever, we're gonna pop these in the oven. 350 degrees for an hour. Well, it's at 425 right now, so we're gonna do that. For the world is full of zanies and fools. Well, there's that, that was quite simple. When those are done cooking, we sprinkle with candied pecans. You can make them, which is on the direction, the recipe, or you can buy them. And that, my friends, is called semi-homemade, okay? Sprinkle with goat cheese, and your guests will be like, wow, she fancy. I'd be like, no man, I just got it off Pinterest. Speaking of fancy, these appetizers are done. Okay, you know what I'm really excited about? Chocolate caramel pretzel bars. Yes, please. What do I need, actually? <laughs> Pretzels, butter, brown sugar, chocolate. Butter. Okay, baking sheet, and this time I am going to line it with aluminum foil, just because the bottom is going to be really messy. Oh, man. And then we spray this. I got my itty bitty committee pretzels. They're actually so cute. I'm just gonna spread these out along the bottom. Look how many they are. Of course you can use any pretzel that you like, but I, oh my gosh, they're so crunchy. Holy crap. That's the first time I've had a non-gluten-free pretzel in a really long time. I think I'm gonna need the whole bag. I'm gonna have another one. All right, let's bring it to the stove. One cup of butter and one cup of brown sugar. Did I even tell you what we're making? Something delicious. We're going to let this come to a boil. Well, first melt it, come to a boil, and then uh, let it boil for three minutes, stirring constantly. Do you see it bubbling away? 
Three minutes. We're making caramel sauce over here. Caramel, caramel, rose by any other name. Don't mix it with your left hand. This might be a disaster in the making. I spilled some on my huge burner here. Still figuring out how to use the stove. Pretty sure my alarm, my smoke detector was about to go off. Is it even Thanksgiving if your smoke alarm doesn't go off? Well, my arm's about to fall off, so that means it's finished. Oh boy, does this smell good. It smells like Aunt Annie's, Auntie Anne's, however you pronounce that. Drizzle it all over your pretzels. It's okay if you leave a, a few gaps. Just do your best, because it'll kind of flatten out as it bakes in the oven. So here's step one, then you toss it in the oven, 325 degrees for eight to 10 minutes. I feel like we should have made some more caramel. It's whatever. I looked everywhere for the chocolate chips. Couldn't find them. Alex did. Where were they? Oh yeah. Up your butter out of the corner. In the process of looking for them, I did find these. So I would call that a win. I don't know who bought these. It wasn't me, but I sure am thankful. A bon appetit. Delicious. Wow. I'm definitely allergic to something in this. Hashtag worth it. It's leaving like a film around my whole mouth, but YOLO. Well, I have two things to say. Where is my oven mint? This did not work out. I might have to just cook some more caramel. It's not gonna break into pieces. Like it's been cooking for like 20 minutes. It smells fantastic. Those carrots, divine. I really hate to do this, but I'm gonna have to cook some more caramel. That's gonna set me back about five minutes. You know, I don't know what it is, but something about this smells like Aunt Annie's pretzels. So I'm just gonna go in the gaps that I didn't get before, and then hopefully we'll be good. So this is four sticks of butter, two cups of brown sugar, and some really great pretzels. And if this doesn't taste great, there's no hope for anything else. Ooh, forgot to turn the oven off again. I mean the stove. This time I'm gonna come in and kind of like manipulate it into the dry spot. Well, there's no manipulating this stuff. It is rock hard once it touches this crap. Well, all I can say is that we did our best at this point. Okay, into the oven. The lost calls. Ooh, it's hot. Into the oven for eight minutes. Clean this before it gets all crusty. It's burning my hands. Ah, it's on my list. Let's move on to the gluten-free pull-apart dinner rolls, shall we? We need two cups. Two and three quarters cup of flour alternative. I use this like Bob's Red Mill. One and a half teaspoons of xanthan gum. And I don't know much about this stuff other than it is in a lot of keto and gluten-free baking. Two tablespoons instant yeast. And by a tablespoon, I mean teaspoon. Oh, the sugar. About a quarter cup of sugar. Makes the rolls taste good. And then one teaspoon of salt. I need a bite of this donut. Give me some energy. Says we need one cup of warm water. It says to actually use a thermometer. <laughs> Apparently they've never met me, so I'm just gonna wait until the tap is nice and warm. This sink is so convenient. One cup, I'm just gonna drizzle it in here. Add two tablespoons of butter. It's supposed to be melted. At this point, it's softened, that's good enough. One egg over here. One egg right in there. Please don't get any shells. One teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Oh, this stuff is so weird and gross. One teaspoon and not a drop more, my friends. I just use the cap, fill it up. Oh, the smell makes me want to vomit. You know what happened? When I was pregnant with my first, I had pulled pork that had a lot of apple cider vinegar in it, and it was not a good time after that, okay? Mix on medium speed for three minutes. It's looking real chunky. Not sure how that is gonna somewhat turn into bread. I did so much wrong, it's gonna be hard to tell exactly where things went awry. So while that's mixing, we're gonna finish up this. So two cups of chocolate chips. Apparently you just scatter them on top and then throw it back in the oven and it'll melt the chocolate chips. And I also have to tell you something 
Yeah, this is not enough. Oh. Did I double the recipe? I, I must have. I have to make it work, okay? This is what I have. A few more. Gosh, I feel like that's plenty. Back into the oven until they're melted. Just a couple minutes. All right, well, this bread is act. Oh, boy. It's actually looking pretty good. I am woman, hear me roar. Oh gosh, I, there's no grip on this thing. What I do last time, hug it? I love you so much. Oh yes. And this, this is the dough, you guys. Okay, here we go. So I got these really pretty pie dishes and then realized, oh, <laughs> I'm not making any pie. Spray it with a little non-stick. Grab a really big uh, scooper here. Ooh, I hate that noise. We're gonna make nine scoops. One in the middle. Oh boy, maybe I should have greased this thing. And then eight around. We let rise for 45 minutes to an hour. Oh man, oh my gosh, I forgot about the pretzels. The chocolate is burning. Oh, God, I'm gonna oh, burn it. Okay, I uh, totally almost forgot about these. I think we made it in time. I need a spatula. A spatula, I need a spatula. That's one. Okay, now we just smooth it out. Oh wow, I could have let it go another minute or two. Freaking out over nothing. Can you see it? Okay, good. Okay, well, that's like four cups of chocolate chips. Still didn't even cover it. It's whatever. People will eat it and they'll be like, oh, this is so great. Ooh, can I have the recipe? I'll be like, yeah, man, it's so simple. No skill involved at all. All right, we're gonna let this cool. But first I'm gonna try one. Yeah, it's good. Tastes good. The sweet and the salty, it's all there. On to a really simple dessert. Is this next on our list? I don't even care at this point. Actually, I kind of do. All right, hold on, let's, let's prep the baked feta first. I need a container to put it in. Oh, is this good? This might be good. Nobody knows. Okay, stop that nonsense. Half a cup, did I tell you what we're making yet? I don't even know. We're making some baked feta. I'm gonna, okay, that is quite, Enough, thank you very much. We're made. Unreal. Worse than my kids, they, it doesn't listen to me. Okay. Stop playing that noise. As I was saying, baked feta is next on the menu. I was gonna throw it together tomorrow, but the least amount of things I can do tomorrow, the better. Half a cup of what are these? Julianne sun-dried tomatoes in here. You know what, I'm gonna do the whole jar because I just know myself and what the heck am I gonna do with half a jar of sun-dried tomatoes in my fridge? Likely forget that it's there and then next time I need them, I'm gonna buy a whole new jar. Also, the block of feta cheese, you need eight ounces, so I'm pretty much gonna double this recipe anyway. It'll be fine. You need one cup of pitted olives so we'll do two cups since we're doubling. So one cup of, wait, these are pitted, right? Yeah. One cup of this stuff, one cup of this stuff. I tried to get the fancy olives. I actually wanted to make this really cool muffalata appetizer because I love muffalata, but it's so much when I buy it from Costco, I have so much I can't eat through it fast enough. And wouldn't you know it, Costco did not have it. Man, I love olives. Technically, it's a fruit, isn't it? I'm gonna eat one right now. Mmm! Yeah, I'm gonna use the rest of these too. What am I gonna do with like four olives in the fridge? I can't get to them, just use your hands. All right, there we go. Now we're talking. Mix that up. One third cup of olive oil. So I'll do, I don't know, a half a cup or so. It calls for some thyme, rosemary, and oregano. And sure, if you have it, fresh herbs are great but also Italian seasoning is there for you when you need it. I'm just gonna mix that in. And then I chopped up several cloves of garlic here. Just gonna add that. And then some pepper. Wasn't that easy? Maybe a little bit more pepper. Olives are really salty. Give this a mix. And let's set it up over here, shall we? This looks so good. It smells amazing. 
So I just dump that right over top of the feta cheese. Holy cow. Someone served this at a restaurant and charged $20 per ounce. That would be great. And then tomorrow, cook it for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. But for now, I'm gonna take a picture of that. You can also serve it with some crustinis. I don't know, we just have some crackers. <laughs> take a spoon to it. I almost forgot to share this one. I thought, okay, let's wrap it up for the night. Uh-uh. Okay, this is a dessert. It is, I don't know, peanut butter brookie, let's just call it. And I figured you can do different variations. So essentially what it is, is cookie dough on the bottom. And I, I told you, semi-homemade. We're going easy today. It is Thanksgiving, so I need to give myself a break, and so do you. So a little bit of cookie dough at the bottom. So a little bit of cookie dough at the bottom, and then I'm gonna flatten it out. Is that too much? Oh boy, yeah, that's probably too much. Okay, but you get the point. Cookie dough at the bottom. A Reese's peanut butter cup. Oh, it fits so perfectly in there, look at that. And then on top, I have mixed together some Ghirardelli brownie mix. Oh, what? How can this not be delicious? Grab a scoop of this, drizzle it over top, cook it, and oh my gosh, people are gonna be drooling over these. As a replacement in the middle, if you wanna make these gluten and dairy free, you can find cookie dough that you can make and all the adjustments, right? Um, you can also throw in an Oreo in the middle. I've made those as like a sheet pan brownie before and they are to die for. So if you don't like peanut butter or you have a peanut butter allergy, that's one way to get around it. So I'm just gonna fill these up. Waited forever to buy this tub of cookie dough from Costco, now is the day. I can make a whole other batch of these, not sure if I will, so I'm just gonna pop these into the oven and probably eat the rest of this with a spoon, maybe this too, salmonella, I dare you. Ghirardelli brownie mix is the best. So that does it for today. I have to tidy up the house and get ready for tomorrow. I still have a few recipes to throw together tomorrow, so we'll continue on, but I wanna show the mess that I've made thus far. I feel like no one ever really shows the mess. To be fair, those are clean dishes from earlier. But, I mean, some of these are dirty from earlier, but that's life, right? So I have all of these, and then all of this to deal with, right? Oh, and then there's one more counter. Wow, over here. This is mostly food that I've prepared and need to put away. Oh, the rolls. Oh, aren't they looking great? Okay, I'll cook those probably tomorrow so that I can serve them fresh and warm. The carrots came out of the oven. We'll finish these in the morning and everything else looks really great. Well, good morning. It's way too early in the morning to be up. I just couldn't sleep. Too much to do. I am working on a crock pot artichoke dip. I'm just gonna throw all of this in the crock pot. It's gonna be no big deal. 14 ounces of artichokes. Obviously, I'm not following the recipe. I'm doing more because more is more. Welcome to America. Some garlic cloves, 10 ounces of spinach. It calls for six or eight, I don't care. Some Parmesan cheese, mozzarella cheese, and cream cheese. Lots of cheese. Wentworth is also awake and just ate a garlic clove and learned a very valuable lesson. Oh my gosh, by the way, I'm just gonna throw everything in the crock pot, but last time I was at Costco, there was a free sample and something was, I thought it was like crackers or something or I don't know. It was freeze dried garlic. Oh, was I in for the surprise of my life. Cream cheese going in, a quarter cup or more of Parmesan cheese. Let's do like half a cup, couple cups of mozzarella cheese. Oh, for a second I thought, my crock pot is gonna be too big for this. And then some spinach. I, this was frozen. I feel like it's the easiest way to do it. I just put it in the microwave and drained it out. Like I squeezed it over the sink because it had a lot of liquid in it. So I'm just going to mix this up and then put it on high. Crock pot stuffing mix as if stuffing wasn't easy enough <sighs> when it comes in a bag. I almost made this from scratch and then remembered, oh, I'm making 700 other things. I'm gonna doctor it up. But then I realized, oh, Kim, you served celery and hummus the other day for a bunch of children and they ate it all. 
So all I have is some onion that's sauteing on my stove top with some butter. I'm going to add four cups of chicken broth. I'm gonna add the onions. This is one stick of butter and one onion just diced up. You'll work with what you have, right? And then of course you can add some fresh herbs, but grocery store was very limited on their fresh herb selection and my herbs died in the move. <laughs> Let's use that excuse. That's for my turkey, the star of the show. So I think I'm just going to use some Italian seasoning, same kind of effect a little bit and call it a day. I actually think that's a bit too wet, so I, I am gonna add a second bag. All right, great, pop a top on that and uh, I'll be embarrassed about this dish. I'll tell him Alex made this one. <laughs> Next up, mashed potatoes. First wound of the Thanksgiving festivities. Oh my gosh, I'm so upset. Ouch. <laughs> it's like insta bruise. Let me get a band aid. Oh, it had to be my. At least it's on my left hand, is all I can say. I told you guys this thing was sharp. They say the most dangerous tool in the kitchen is a dull knife. I would disagree. I would say mandolin, super sharp, and a brand new super sharp peeler. I've never cut myself with a dull knife before. Always cut myself with a sharp one. Pot watch, easy cleanup, or at least the easiest I've ever found. And potatoes are pretty dirty, so I always like to wipe the area down. Some things never change. So I was going to split the potatoes up and add some to the green beans and then make some mashed potatoes, but I just don't think I bought enough. I don't know what I was saying. Uh, potatoes, I'm making dairy-free mashed potatoes, so here we go. I'm just gonna cube them up and throw them in my instant pot. Hey, remember when I decluttered a bunch of crock pots? Now's the day where I need more. All my potatoes are diced. Look at this, perfectly positioned sink. I'm just gonna fill it up. I don't measure, it's supposed to be at least a cup. If you are looking for the best mashed potato recipe, this ain't it. But I do my best. I add one container of dairy-free cream cheese, two sticks, maybe three or four, because it is Thanksgiving, of dairy-free butter, and then so I have oat milk, but if you're looking for the creamiest, dreamiest mashed potatoes, Pioneer Woman has an exquisite recipe, calls for like heavy cream, half and half, lot of butter, cream cheese, it's so good. I made it before, I'll link it below for you. It's go time, the sun is coming up, it's feeling great. I have yet to go to the bathroom this morning or eat anything. I'll be fine. Have you ever made a ham in a crock pot before? It is wonderful, highly recommend. So I never knew this. In a small saucepan, I'm gonna use this because I've already used it this morning. A little bit of onion, never hurt anyone. You um, mix it with three tablespoons of water and then this is the glaze. See, before I never read the instructions and just powdered it over the ham and it that still comes out great. So I'm just gonna let this come to a bubble and then we'll move on and do the turkey. Maybe I should have scraped the onions out. It's whatever, <laughs> I'm just gonna pour it over the ham. And then I set my crock pot, I'll set it on low because it's several hours before it's uh, time to eat. And this thing is gonna fill up with so much juice. Moving on to the turkey, I have some thyme or rosemary or both. I think this is thyme and this is rosemary. That's my guess. I'm sticking to it. And then we have some sage. The classic holiday flavors. I'm gonna take 20 minutes out of my life and uh, stem this rosemary. What did I say this was? It doesn't matter. Part of me just wants to cut it with the stem on. But I guess instead of showering, I'll just do this. Now that my herbs are all cut, I'm going to mash it with some butter. I have two sticks of butter. It's probably not enough herbs, but whatever, man. You work with what you have. That's the theme of my life. Oh, the butter is not even soft enough for this. One of them is. Okay, I'm just gonna try to 
mash this all together. It actually looks fantastic. A nice rich herb butter. I don't know if this is proper, but I'm gonna add salt and pepper to this rather than like straight to the turkey. Was that enough? Probably not. I don't know, man. I've never done a turkey before. Did I already tell you that? Cooked for the very first time. All right, let's get our turkey. Which way is up? Is this way up? Here's the mashed potatoes, all done. I definitely got an arm workout. You know, I say this all the time that I need a hand mixer, but really I don't need a hand mixer. Taste test for me, a boon ipity. Delicious, mm-hmm, fantastic. My favorite part of Thanksgiving, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day is playing. It's actually the first time that we've been, uh, well, I've been able to watch it since I had Eleanor because I birthed Eleanor and then was in the hospital the next day on Thanksgiving and I felt like it was probably one of my favorite Thanksgivings because I got released that day, so I got to see family at night because we just went to straight to family Thanksgiving. But that morning in the hospital, I got to watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade by myself, like in the hospital bed, relaxing. I didn't have to make food. I didn't have to clean up. It was fantastic. Very different from today. We are running amok trying to clean the house, get everything ready for guests because it's the first time a lot of people are coming over. I'm trying to set up so I'm gonna show you around all the food that I've made so far. Okay, so this is not how we're gonna set everything up. I'm thinking main dishes here, plates and cups here, appetizers over here, and then, and then we're gonna eat outside. There's tables and stuff set out. So for now, the turkey is in the oven, roasting away. Yeah, I don't know, man. Okay, so over here I have to reheat a lot of dishes. I have to add cheese and some herbs to that and reheat it. I made mashed potatoes dairy free style. This is the butternut squash dish I made, the gluten free rolls that I made. I have to throw these in the oven. The ham is wafting through the house. It smells so good. Spinach artichoke dip back there. Ooh, I whipped up a ton of gravy and I've kind of been neglecting it. So, whoops. Okay, that's fine. And then I have some stuffing back here. Over here, I need to put that in a dish so it looks a little nicer. I popped these out. This is the cookie brownie with the Reese's in the middle. And then I had some left over, so I just put it all in a dish. It's fine, whatever, it tastes the same. The crab things, Alex tried one. He said they're fantastic, not for me. Uh, the cranberry dip, waiting for it to come to room temperature. And then I also have to throw this in the oven to let it cook. And then I'm going to throw together, I mean that alone will feed a crowd. People are also bringing food. Better to have too much food than not enough, right? And then I'm setting up a little charcuterie board. Guests are starting to arrive, mostly because Alex told some people it started an hour earlier than it actually does. Also, my family is traveling from a couple hours away and they're running a little bit late. Good news and bad news. Ah, deep breaths. My oven isn't cooking the turkey. <laughs> So great, I can't, I don't know if I've cooked anything in my oven, but then I was thinking I had it on all day yesterday, prepping, so I know it works. I don't know what happened, maybe I burned it out. It is not cooking anything. Oh, it's at 170, that's the highest it's been. Don't touch anything. So the turkey is still not done, it's been in there for four hours. Not even close to being done. All my dishes are here. Oh, what I wanna show you. This, this is what I wanted to show you. There, there's a better view. This is really gonna make my house smell good. <laughs> I love I love DW so much. Yeah. All right, I finally put together the charcut board. I'm missing the spinach artichoke dip. Sorry, holding a child, trying to put her down. Oh, what do you want a grape? Grape, thank you. Okay, people are here. I need to entertain, but also, thank goodness, we have a large yard. They're just roaming around everywhere. Um, I just wanted to give you a good shot of some appetizers that I have out. Obviously not all of them. Oh, 
Eleanor helped me set the brie out. Oh, fantastic. We'll just turn that. Turn the bead around. There we go. Now I know because all of you told me we can eat the paper on the brie, okay? Now I am knowledgeable and all of that good stuff. Look at these. I picked these up from the Target dollar spot. Three for three dollars. Like what? Who's fancy now? Fancy with some brie and cool wooden cutting spoons for my cheese. All right, that's enough. Gotta go. The world's best cheesecake has arrived. It's being devoured. This has rave reviews, even though not many people have eaten it. This fresh whipped cream makes everything taste better. I figured it out where I went wrong. Um, I think when I adjusted the racks in the oven. Oh, what's my, look, I even have a fancy, whatever, this is therm thermometer. What does it need to be at to be done? I probably should probably look that up. Anyway, my bird is finally cooking. It is 6.30 at night. <laughs> We're having a grand old time. Everyone's still hanging out, which is so nice. Um, but the, one of my racks in my oven was like cockeyed and it wouldn't close all the way. You guys know. The last thing I want to do is buy a new oven. Swear I wouldn't have done it ever. Did I tell you I finally got the oven working? Look at that bird. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? All right, I'm going to check the temperature and see if it's done yet. I mean, it's definitely hotter than it was, but it's still like not. It's at 140. 846. I finally have Meredith down to sleep and I think my oven is actually working. What? Oh, it only took, what, 100 hours? All right, let's finally stick this sucker in and see what the heck is happening. Oh boy, look at that thing. Turn, turn, turn. Come on, 160. Come on, what is it, 160 or 165 it should be? Oh my God, it's done. Holy crap, let's get it out. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I don't know where my oven mitts are. Holy crap, I don't know how I'm gonna take this out of the oven. I need, I need two. I need two oven mitts or two towels. Holy crap. All right, I got two towels. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see, no one's here to eat Thanksgiving turkey anymore. Everyone left. I'm ready for bed. Oh, oh it's heavy. Ah. Oh, look at this beast. Look, it's perfectly cooked. Little overdone, but that's okay. It's unreal. Ooh, it's actually at 180. The green beans are done too, the green beans. Hey everyone, the green beans are ready. <laughs> the turkey's ready. It's time to eat. You guys know the very last thing I wanted to do was buy a new oven. Like no stinking joke, I think I don't know if I explained earlier, I, people literally like just left 20 minutes ago, but the racks, I think readjusting them, like prevented it from closing all the way and actually heating up. I don't even want to know. I'm just so glad. Yeah, they're done, finally. <laughs> okay, it's midnight and we're just gonna have a little taste test. Thank goodness one of my nephews made a turkey today. He kind of saved the day. <laughs> he definitely saved the day, okay. Is it hot? Turkey it's amazing. It's absolutely incredible, and I'm not even lying. Did it's the best it? turkey I've ever made. Did you try Hands down. Actual, there's some of the actual turkey one. Not it is it moist. Is Everyone is yeah. raving. Yeah. The kids are fighting about which turkey leg. That's the best part about eating when everyone's gone. Each sister gets a turkey leg because the other two kids are asleep. Wait, there's two turkey legs. Okay, we've been munching on it, eating half of it, just the one of us. And it's literally the best turkey I've ever had in my life. I don't even like turkey. It's so juicy. It's like crazy. Look how juicy that is. It's nuts. You're going to use that broth. You can squeeze the juice out of it. Yeah, I'm going to cook it like this every year. Take 12 hours. <laughs> cook that. it at 100 degrees <laughs> for 12, 12 to 15 broth? hours. I mean, you can't even really understand, but it is so good. So juicy. It doesn't look like the normal white dry meat that you just have to be nice about. Oh yeah, your turkey <laughs> tastes great. Yuck. I thought it would be dry because we cooked it for so long, but it's the opposite. I thought I made an outro after Thanksgiving. Apparently I didn't. Thank you guys so much for watching, hanging out with me, cooking with me. It was a day. 
especially with the oven. I cannot believe my oven. I thought for a second, I'm cursed. I tried to cook it at 411 degrees. I thought maybe this is just my destiny. I was mentally preparing myself to cook everything at 170 degrees for the rest of my life because you guys know I'm not gonna buy a new oven. Anyway, <laughs> I think I figured it out. It, I'm still kind of unsure, but it's kind of, it's working enough for now. Just do this. One of my nephews really saved the day with that turkey that he brought. And I think we must have watched the same video to make a turkey because his was almost identical. The stuff he put inside, we talked about it. And he said he didn't watch the same one, but I'm like, I don't know, man. Anyway, it was a lovely day. I don't know if I showed you the table we had set up. It was nothing fancy. We just had like foldable tables, but we all sat at one table, which was really special. We ate outside. The weather was amazing and we thought you know eating inside we would all be separated outside we have that amazing view and we just really took advantage of the outdoor space and then after we ate we all hung out outside there was things to do we had like games set up and stuff so it was just a great time hanging out with family is always my favorite it's one of, that's why thanksgiving is my favorite holiday there's no pressure for gifts or anything else you just come you eat and you enjoy each other's company and that's what i love the most anyway i know this video is so long so if you stuck around Kudos to you. Thank you so much for being a friend. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.